What's up, I'm Vin, and today I wanna to go through a question from one of my comments here. And this question is solving a complex equation. And we're gonna be using de Moivre's theorem or elements of de Moivre's theorem to help us do this. So we have given that square root three minus i is a root of this equation. We wanna know what is the value of a and b. So what we're gonna do here is let me just say z is equal to square root of three minus i, where z is a complex number. What we wanna do here is we're gonna plug this into the equation to solve for a and b, but we need these notes here. We're gonna to have to convert this complex number from rectangular form into polar form, and then eventually Eulerian form over here. So pretend you forget these notes. The way I remember this is that I just draw out a right triangle. So when I look at it in rectangular form, I notice here the x component or the real component is square root three, and the coefficient of the imaginary component is negative one. So if I were to draw a diagram over here, I'm going, and I'll draw this a little bit neater. We're gonna go to the right root three, and we're going down one unit like this. So our complex number for z, the root, is over here. So what I do if I forget these notes is I just draw out a line going from the origin. I draw a horizontal, then a vertical line, and I go ahead and I build the right triangle here, and this is the angle theta. This is our x, this is our y, and this value from the center to the end of the complex number is r, which is the magnitude of the complex number. So then what we have here, we could solve for the value of r if we note here that this distance is root three and this distance going down is one. So now it's just Pythagorean theorem. We could say root three squared plus one squared is equal to r squared. And this is gonna give us three plus one equals r squared. And if you take the square root of both sides, this is gonna tell us r is equal to two. So this is an important component because it's gonna help us convert this number into the last two forms here. Now, the next thing we should solve for is what is theta? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve for the reference angle because theta is coming from standard position here, but I'm just gonna treat this as a random right triangle out in space here where I just wanna know what is theta. And theta, uh, the reference angle, is gonna be tangent inverse of the opposite side is one unit long over the adjacent side is square root three like this. And once again, I'm not including the negative one in here because I'm solving for the reference angle first. And then what I'm gonna do is once I know the reference angle, I'm just gonna say minus whatever that positive acute angle is because we're going into quadrant four. And tangent inverse of one over root three will work out to pi over six radians. So then theta is gonna be equal to negative pi over six because once again, from standard position, we're going into quadrant four. So now that we have these two components, what we could do is we could write out two more representations of this complex number. We could write it in polar form. We could say z equals r, which is two, times cosine of theta is negative pi over six. And then we have plus i sine, and theta is still negative pi over six. So this is another representation of this. And then yet another representation that we could use is the last one where we have r, which is two, e to the i theta. So if I do i times theta, that's gonna be negative i pi over six like this. So now why do we do this? Well, in a moment when we plug into the formula, we have to know what z to the ninth is. So if you were to raise this binomial to the ninth power, you'd have to multiply it by itself nine times and that would take forever. But when you raise this exponential form to the ninth power, then you're just using law of exponents and it's gonna be way faster. So now that we have the extra representations that we need, we need to know what is z to the ninth power. So z to the ninth power, we could just take this form here and we're gonna raise both sides to the ninth power. So we have two e to the negative i pi over six, and this is being raised to the ninth power. And this is gonna be equal to, we have two to the ninth power times, and when I raise e to the i pi over six to the ninth, even with the minus there, this is gonna make e to the negative nine i pi over six like this. And now when we simplify this, two to the ninth power is 512. And then this is gonna simplify to negative three pi over two times i. And once again, that's an exponent of e. So I'm just simplifying that fraction here. And then how does this help us? Well, now we could expand this and say this is 512 and we're gonna go back to polar form like this. So we have 512 and then we have cosine of negative three pi over two plus i sine negative three pi over two. And now watch what happens here. Cosine of negative three pi over two is equal to zero because this is gonna be the same thing as positive pi over two. If we were to go 
negative 270, that's going to bring us up here in the north position at pi over 2 from standard position. So this is equal to 0. That's going to cancel out. And sine of negative 3 pi over 2 is equal to 1. So this is just going to work out to 512 times pi times 1. So this is going to be 512i. In this equation, we also have to know what is z to the third power. So z to the third power, we're going to repeat this process. We're just going to take z from before, the 2e, and then we had to the negative i pi over 6. And we're going to raise this whole thing to the third power. So we're going to have 2 to the third power, which is equal to 8. And then we're going to have e to the negative 3 pi i over 6. Because once again, when you raise a power to a power, you just multiply those exponents together. And now this is going to simplify to 8 e to the negative pi over 2 times i. So now we're going to go back into polar form here. And this is going to be 8 times. We'd have cosine of negative pi over 2 plus i times sine of negative pi over 2. And if we simplify this here, cosine of negative pi over 2 cancels out. So that's going to be gone. And sine of negative pi over 2 is equal to negative 1. So we have 8 times i times negative 1, which is going to be negative 8i. So now we can just plug this all into the equation. z to the ninth is 512i. So we have 512i plus 16 times 1 plus i times z to the third power is we have negative 8i. So we're just going to replace those components now. Plus a plus ib is equal to 0. So now we just have to simplify things a bit. If we do 16 times negative 8, that's going to make negative 128. So if we distribute a negative, well, you know what? I'll just show that step. So we have 512i, and then we have minus 128i on the outside times 1 plus i plus a plus ib is equal to 0. So now we do a little bit of algebra here. We have 512i. And then when we distribute here, what we're going to have is minus 128i. And then we're going to have minus 128i squared. And we have plus a plus ib is equal to 0. But another important thing we have to know here, anytime you get an i squared, i squared is equal to negative 1. So we're going to have negative 128 times negative 1 is positive 128. So we'll go ahead and just do that now. This is a positive 128. And now we could just combine these two here. We'll just do the long subtraction on the side because uh, for this question here, we're saying we're doing this without a calculator. So if we work this out, we're just going to borrow here and we're going to see what do we have left. After we do the long subtraction, we're going to have 384i. So we have 384i plus a plus ib is equal to 0. So we want to solve for the values of a and b. And it's important to note that a complex number is only equal to 0 when both the real and imaginary part are equal to 0. So what this tells us here, if we group stuff together, is that the real part, the we'll isolate that, the 128 plus a. And then we have plus i times we would have 384 plus b. Both of these components have to equal 0. So what this tells us is that a plus 128 has to equal 0, which means that a is equal to negative 128. And then we also need 384 plus b, the coefficient of i, the imaginary part. We need that to equal 0. So b has to equal negative 384. But now, just to be safe, we'll check our answer with the calculator here. So we go to mode. Just make sure that you're in a plus bi mode. Most of the time, the calculator is going to start in real. Just switch over to a plus bi and hit enter. And now on the main screen, the root was square root of 3 and then minus i. And to write in the imaginary i, we write second decimal. And that pulls this up. And then I'm just going to press enter here. And I'm going to store this as the letter z so that I could type in the equation directly. So I press store alpha 2 to get z. And now this is stored as the letter Z. So if we type in the equation, I'm going to type in everything except A plus IB at the end. So what we had is we had alpha 2. So we had Z to the ninth power. So we could solve for this part, Z to the ninth plus, And then we had 16. And I'm sorry, a little typo there. 16 times we had I plus 1. So that's second decimal plus 1. And then it ended with z to the third power. So we could use the calculator to just get this part. And notice if we stop here, see how we get 128 plus 384i. We needed a plus ib to cancel this out. So a had to be negative 128 and b had to be negative 384. So our answer definitely checks out.